So what is it about miracles? What is it about miracles? I mean, are miracles something that we, um, that are expected? I think on some level, right, in our spiritual life, we expect miracles to happen spiritually. We know that God is capable. He has done miracles. But I mean something different, like things that we expect on a regular basis every day. So for instance, if you walk into a room and you flip on a switch and the lights come on, we don't go, it's a miracle. I mean, maybe you do. You didn't pay your bill. I don't know, but... I don't know, but, you know, but normally we flip a switch and we don't think it's a miracle when the lights come on, right? Or something else. Like I remember if you have a car like I had when I was in high school, I drove a 1967 Volkswagen Bug. Yeah, today it's a lot cooler than it was in the 80s, but, when, you know, sometimes you get in the morning, you turn that thing on, and I'd be like, oh, what a miracle, right? Like, it actually started. One, it had gas in it. Two, uh, it ran, right? It was, it's awesome. And the cool thing about living in the 80s, for those of you who uh, grew up in the 80s, you could find, you could find, thank you, yeah. you can find gas money. Yeah. You can find gas money in, in the seat cushions of your couch. Yeah. That doesn't happen today. So I, you know, I don't know what kind of change you're losing, but usually it's not enough to pay for gas nowadays. <laughs> uh, paying for gas is a miracle, am I right? <laughs> All right. But those things, so it's not something that's expected. How about unexpected? Let's say you receive a gift. And it's unexpected, but you receive the gift. And it's not a miracle. Well, depending on what kind of friends you have, maybe a miracle. You're like, whoa, I got a gift. But it's like not a miracle. It's awesome, yes, it's cool, but it's not a miracle. So even things that are unexpected, we wouldn't say are just miracles. Matter of fact, let me read to you the definition of a miracle. And it's this, a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be a work of a divine agency. I love that. I think of it this way. Here's a miracle. It's God's unexpected personal touch of love in your everyday life. That's what a miracle is. And, and here's what I want you to see. I say everyday life because there are miracles happening every day. But a lot of times we frame miracles as something extraordinary like there's a person who was blind and now they see or they, they, they couldn't walk but now they can walk. We, we frame it in this way. But I am here to tell you that miracles happen every day like the miracle that my life has been radically changed by Jesus. That's a miracle. I think that's even a bigger miracle than someone being physically healed. Though those are huge. But we forget that every day, the fact that you and I our eyes opened up this morning and we can take a breath. Thank you, Jesus. Like there are these things that we begin to take for granted. That's what I'm saying, like these are miracles. And I think it's important though for us to look back in those gospels and look at those miracles that Jesus performed. And that's fun and that's good, but we don't just read them or we shouldn't just read them just to say, oh, that's, that, that was an awesome event. I wish I could have been there. I wish I could see it. And, and do miracles do point to things? Like we know this, that miracles point to God's power, the power that Jesus had, right, as God. It points, though, to the fact that I think it tells us something about who God is. It shows us his love for his creation, that he was willing because he designed all of the laws of physics and how this whole th thing goes together, the laws of nature. He, he designed it all. He created it all. So he can just like, you know what, I'm just going to press pause on that for a minute. I'm just going to whittle in here, and I'm just going to give you a miracle. And why does he say, why does he put pause on that? Because it shows his love for you. And it shows his love for me. So it's important to look back at miracles and what happened, but it's important also to look back and say, what does it mean for me today? What is that saying to me today? How do I apply that? I mean, we all want that, right? Well, as we look at today, we're gonna look at a miracle that's probably one, if you've been in church any amount of time, you probably heard it. It's so recorded in the, uh, the book of Mark chapter two. That's where we're gonna be today. And so you'll be able to follow along, but it's this story. Let me just read it to you. Um, that way you and I can just kind of get going. And I wanna take a look at this miracle and how you, what it means for you and I today. It says, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there were no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived 
carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him in to see Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof <laughs> above the, his head, I mean, Jesus' head. Then they lowered that man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Sing their faith. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of the religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sin. And what the words that I'm about to read you, I think are some of the Jesus, uh, he puts it to these guys. And there are many other, there's some other occasions, but this, uh, we, you know, everybody knows I do student ministries, and this is something that we say to student ministries, this is something we do with students. They say, this is like one of Jesus' savage moments. Like, he, he, just, he just says it. So these guys are thinking this thing. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, <laughs> why do you question this in your hearts? You think your thoughts are your own. <laughs> They're not, right? These guys are sitting there thinking this thing, and then Jesus is like, hey, I'm on to you, right? <laughs> Calling you out. So you think your thoughts are your own, but they're not. God knows what we think. God knew what they were thinking in the moment. Jesus says, why do you question these things in your heart? And then he says this, is it easier to say to a paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to stand up and walk, take your mat, I love this. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man, that's Jesus, has the authority on earth to forgive sin. He said, look, isn't it easier for me just to say those words or to make this guy get up and walk again? He's like, look, basically saying, just to show you that I have the authority to do either one, I'm gonna do the other, right, as well. And so he says to the man, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And then the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were amazed and they praised God, exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. You're darn right you haven't. Can you imagine? You're in there. Hey, let's hear this guy, Jesus. He's back home. He's getting pop popular. This guy somehow gets lowered down through the roof. And Jesus, not only, I love the fact that he heals him from his sins first. Let's not miss that. Two, then he says, oh, you think that's, that's hard? Well, watch this. And the guy gets up and he walks and he walks through the crowd, the stunned crowd. Yeah, they hadn't seen anything like that because they had never seen God in the flesh before. And he does what God does. He brings miracles into the lives of his created people. He brings miracles to the lives of you and the miracles in the lives of myself and my family and everyone that I know. God is in the business of bringing miracles. Now from a 30,000 foot view, here's what I see in this passage. I see hope. And that's what I want you to know today. Like, this is a passage of hope. And because I've read to the end of this book, I know God's plan is simply to make everyone whole, to get, be in relationship with you and with me and with all of his creation. He wants to be in relationship with us. That is simply, that's his heart, and that's his plan, that every single hurt that people have today, God would begin to heal if you let him. You see, that's the hope that you and I have in Jesus. That's the hope we have for a future. That's the hope we have in Christ. But here's what I wanna focus on. I wanna get into the weeds of this, but I wanna spend the rest of our time in this miracle and see how it communicates it's the help that you and I can receive today. We know it communicates hope, but how does it help us as we look at this miracle? What do we learn from it? What do we gather from it? And one of the very first things that I see is this, that we can't let anything keep us from truth, from God's truth. Don't let anything keep you from God's truth. You see, the, this crowd had gathered, and, and it was jamming the entrance of this house. There were people all inside. It was packed, and everyone was there to see Jesus. No social distancing, no social like uh, awareness. They're just packed in this house and outside this house, hanging in every window. And these four guys carrying their friends on a mat, like on a stretcher or something. And, and they couldn't get into the house. They knew Jesus was in there. I can only start to imagine, right? 
what this scene looked like. Here are these four guys carrying their friend on a mat. And they get in, one of the guys is like, hey, Johnny, we're not getting in there. So let's jump on the neighbor's roof and then get onto this roof. We can get on the roof. And if you know anything, in, in those times, like the roofs were actually like a part of the house where people would gather. So they probably maybe were thinking there may be some, a, a ladder or some steps that are going down into the house. We, we can get in. So they get up to the roof and they realize that's not the case. And then what do they do? Well, let's just take apart, let's just tear down this roof. Let's just, let's just wreck this roof. Can you imagine me, the guy on the stretcher, he's probably going, fellas, we're gonna have to pay for this. Like this, this is not a good thing. Like, what are we doing? Right, they start ripping off the roof and the guy's like, man, this is gonna cost us something. But I love it, the guys would not stop. They just wouldn't stop. They wouldn't let anything or anyone keep them from getting their friend in front of Jesus. In front of his teaching, in front of the truth. Because as he was teaching God's word, he was speaking God's word. He was the sp spilling truth. And they weren't allowing anything to get in the way to get their friend in front of Jesus. Don't let anything get in your way from the truth. Don't let ever, ever let anything get in the way. Because Jesus is there. Healing is there. His restoration is there. He wants to meet you there. They just wanted to introduce their friend to Jesus, and they wouldn't let anything stop them. So here's the challenge. is to think about your own life. If you had 100 bucks, you came home one day, came home in the evening, you had $100. And in the morning, you couldn't find that $100 you would tear that house apart looking for that $100. Who, who would look for that $100? Okay, you have more hands than the first service. <laughs> first service, I was like, man, $1,000? was like I was in an auction or something. It was wild. I was like, <laughs> someone actually, get, at between service, someone said, hey, if they don't get hands, that's what you say. What if you lost your cell phone? <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's good. Everybody's gonna raise their hand at that cell phone. Woo, man, we, we'd hunt for it. You know, when I was a kid, I was a freshman in high school, and I uh, had my ex first experience at a, at a summer camp with, our, with this church that my family was attending. And we went to this uh, church camp, and uh, they give you like a little program, a little booklet, you can take notes at chapel. And uh, while I was at uh, this camp, because um, this is how it works when you're a freshman and you're at a camp, and there's all these cute girls and stuff, and, and uh, there was this girl named Christy. Okay, and I had this crush, uh, you know, camp crush, they call it, a camp crush on Christy. Don't say that 10 times fast, it'll be a mess. But I had this crush on Christy, and at the end of the uh, week, they, we would, you know, like you do in your yearbook, you, you sign it, you go, oh, hey, you're gonna sign it. So I got enough nerve, and I walked up, and I was like, <laughs> she grabs it, I'm like, okay, that's positive. She writes in it, thank you. <laughs> and you know, you gotta, so I'm sure it was completely awkward, but whatever. So I get in and I read and it says, stay sweet over the summer. And her phone number was right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, I was on cloud nine. I was like, I don't know what I learned from the Lord that week, but I got Christy's phone number. <laughs> that is smoke from the Lord. That's what I thought, again. Freshman boy, okay? So I get home, you know, and you're kind of, so it's the next day, and I'm thinking, well, what do you, you call, right? She said, stay sweet. Okay, so I get to my backpack. Getting a little panicky. So then, you know, I, I get to my, my bag, and I'm, you know, and, and boys, we just shove every, all the dirty clothes in there, so I'm like, <laughs> And it's just like this, you know, stink storm coming out of my bag. It's just, but it's in here. I know it's in here. Man, I couldn't find it. I searched high and low. I, I man, I, I called my pastor. I was like, did I leave my booklet in the van? Like he, like I wanted him to think I wanted my notes from the chapel. Did you, <laughs> did you got my booklet? Couldn't find it. <sighs> Problem is, there's somebody out there. Christy, if you're online and you're watching, I'm not a jerk. I was just unorganized. I, I, I'm sorry. Sorry, but as I said in first service, anybody who knows my wife, God gave me an upgrade, amen? Yeah. I love you, baby. Mm. Man, Woo. holy cow, God is good. That was a miracle, I'll tell you that. Oh, but we look for that phone number, we look for that money. Here's what I wanna ask, here's what I wanna know. What's keeping you from truth? 
What's keeping you from hunting down truth? What's keeping you from, from pulling apart and just getting into God's word? You see, these guys, these four guys, there was this crowd keeping them from getting their friend in front of Jesus. So they literally busted open a roof and got their friend down in that, in that room so that he could have an experience and meet Jesus and be healed. But I love this, not only physically, but spiritually, he was healed. So what is in your life that's keeping you from truth? Don't let anybody keep you from truth. That's the first thing. Here's the second thing. Just don't let anyone say you can't make a difference. Don't let anybody tell you that. In verse five, it says this, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Seeing their faith, their child, my child, your sins are forgiven. Listen, it's a predominant theme in our culture and our society today that, look, and you, you, you can't make a, a difference on your own. You're just one person. What, what could you possibly do by yourself? on your own. You need a movement, you need to be part of a group, you need to kind of create some splash and some momentum and all that stuff. And, and that's what our society says, look, as a one person, you're not gonna make any difference. I wanna say this to you, yes you can. Amen. Listen, because of one person in my life when I was a junior hire, one person who decided to gather junior high kids in their home and to begin to pour out truths about who God is and his love for me, I gave my life to Jesus, and it changed me for the rest of my life. See, that paralyzed man 2,000 plus years ago got in front of Jesus, and it changed his life. It changed his eternity. I think back at the moment that I got saved. I didn't have it all figured out, but I, I wanted to embrace the love and the forgiveness that Jesus offered. One man led me to Christ and his faithfulness. A bunch of crazy junior high kids meeting at his house. And then I think through my ministry and the people and the students that I have led to the Lord and, and, and been able to share the gospel. And this is not about me. This is about the work and the miracle that God can do through one person. And I think about the students that I've had who are in ministry and, and have families. And, and it's, it's just like, it's crazy to think that what God can do through one person. That man, is, his name is Larry Panetta. And I am forever grateful for that man. He changed my life with the truth of Jesus, and I received the miracle of salvation, the greatest miracle that could ever happen in a person's life. That was a miracle. My changed life is a miracle. I want to say, yes, you can make a difference. I mean, I would not be what I, I, who I am without the love of God, but without someone sharing Jesus with me. God wants to say, look, how he has gifted you, how he has shaped you, you can make a difference. He has a plan and a purpose. He already knows because how he made you, created you, shaped you, gifted you, he already knows why he created you that way so that you can fit in this plan he has for you. Will we be open and ready to receive this gift, this miracle? We can't let anything get in our way. God wired you the way you are, and I wanna challenge you, don't let anybody tell you you can't make a difference. Let me be the one to tell you, oh yes, you can, and so you should. So here's my question. Think about right now, who in your life needs the love of God? And it could be a non-believer, and it can, could be a, a follower of Jesus. There are people in, our life, I, in my life who are followers of Jesus, but man, they aren't living or leaning into all that God has already given them. And I know people in my life who don't know Jesus, who resist Jesus, but I can't let that stop me. Who in your life, who's that one person that you can invest in right now? It'll make a difference in their life today and for eternity. You know, this, this third thing I see in this miracle, it teaches us we shouldn't let anything keep us down either. It shouldn't stop us, and it shouldn't keep us down. It says this in verse 10, so I will prove to you that the Son of Man, meaning Jesus, so I'll prove to you that I am who I say I am, has the authority on earth to forgive sins. He said, then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, go home. I mean, imagine this with me for a minute. Here's this guy in the middle of the room. <laughs> Jesus says to him, get up, pick up your mat, pick up your stuff, go home. Could you imagine the guy says, hey, I'm healed, it's a miracle, thanks Jesus, but I'm just gonna hang out on this mat right here, I'm good. 
appreciate it. I can see my legs are back. I'm getting strong. I feel good, but I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I'm okay. I like this place. Even though Jesus said, no, no, get up. I've healed you. You have no setbacks. You have nothing blocking. You have nothing keeping you down. Go. He's like, I'm good. One, this would be a really lame story if that's how it happened, right? <laughs> okay, so here's, here's a, it wasn't in my notes. I shared this for a service, but how many, this, how many of you have ever seen a movie and then the ending, you're like, what? So one time I was trying to score points with my wife and, and you watch a chick flick. So we watched Message in a Bottle. <laughs> how many of you have seen that movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I was, I was like, all right, I'm into it. I'm like, oh, it's cool. And then at the end, and if you haven't seen it, I'm about to spoil it. He gets in that boat and he's about to sail off and go catch back up with the love of his life. It's gonna be awesome. And so at the end of the movie, he gets in the boat and he starts sailing. I'm, I'm going, I'm gonna go find her. This is gonna be awesome. And he dies before that happens. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, that's how this would be if it was a movie. It'd be like Message in the Bottle. Like, what? I was so mad because I was so disappointed, but that's not what happened. There is no disappointment here. The guy gets up. He goes, he goes. Listen, we, when we get healed, we need to get going. We can't stay on the mat. We can't let things keep holding us down. We get healed. We got to get going. We can't let anything keep us down. So here's my question. What in your life is keeping you down? Maybe it's relationships, maybe it's people. You know that you're experiencing God, and if you share that or talk about your faith, you're gonna get ridiculed, there's gonna be some pressure, it's gonna be awkward, people aren't about it, and so therefore you just kinda go, all right, I won't share. I won't share about the miracle of my life. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have a miracle to share. Amen. And you know what? We can't allow people to get in the way. We don't have to be rude, we have to bash them over the head with it, but we can live out our lives and our faith out loud. We can have those kind of conversations. We can give God praise and credit for the things going on in our lives with those people present. So maybe it's people. Maybe it's a habit. Maybe you've had habits in your life that, you, that are keeping you down. It doesn't need to be that way. You don't have, it doesn't need to be chained to your, to your ankle. And it keeps pulling you back and pulling you back. You know, it's like this. It's like this, Jesus says, get up, you're healed. I mean, maybe before you got saved, you had this addiction or this issue. You got saved and you still have that addiction and you still have that issue. And you're like, and so therefore you continue to stay on the mat. That thing continues to stay hooked to your ankle. It's an anchor. We, have, we all have them. We have those little things in our lives that we're just like, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. All of a sudden, oh man, I'm still anchored. And so I'm limited I'm just to stay here. God wants to break those chains so you can walk and live in freedom. You can't allow that to keep you down. You've got to get rid of it. So the question I have for you here is, do you want to be healed? You know, Jesus asked that to somebody in another story. He's like, hey, look, I'm all messed up. First thing he said, do you want to be healed? I think that's relevant. Sometimes we stay on our mat. God's like, you want to be healed? Then let's go. Because when you get healed, you got to go. You got to move. So if you do, God wants to heal you. He wants to heal you where you are broken. He wants to heal you and make you whole so that you can live into your best life. So that doesn't need to be a place that you live anymore. It doesn't need to be a place that you visit. It's gone. We cannot allow things to keep us down. So with those, all three of those things, those are some of the things I see these miracles teach us, but then you have to ask, well, okay, well, then now what? And it's this. Let me give you some quick action steps for you. Force is this. As we look at this and we see those steps, I want you to see this. First thing you need to do this week or today, sit with God this week. You need to define your paralysis. You need to define it. Where are you sick See, all of us, believer, non-believer, we all have areas of our lives that, we, that are still sick, that are still broken, that are still messed up. And, and we live there, and we, sometimes we push those and stuff those and push them away. And guess what? We're paralyzed without God's presence in those areas. So where are you paralyzed? What's paralyzing you? Without God's touch, without his healing. Listen, when you don't allow God into those areas, they're always gonna keep you sick and paralyzed. 
You won't know how to live on your own. You probably tried a million different things and it's not satisfying, it's not helping because you gotta let Jesus do what he does and that is change you and heal you and restore you. No self-help book's gonna do that. Only Jesus. Maybe you've tried those things and you're just frustrated God wants to heal you. Maybe you're isolated and you withdraw yourself and you don't let people in, you don't let people around you. You put up walls. You fear intimacy. God wants to teach you how to live and how to be loved. He wants into those areas. He wants to heal you. So the first step is in the healing process is to find where you are paralyzed, to find what God needs to heal and allow him to come in. Another thing I want you to do this week is think about this. You gotta, you gotta think about, okay, what am I gonna do about it? I know some be like, duh, right. But the problem is we can identify it. There it is, here's my issue. I know it still has a hold on me. I know it still keeps me paralyzed in some areas of my life. And then that's all we do with it. We, we stay, we're on the mat still. That guy knew he was paralyzed. Like, well, yeah, my problem is I can't walk. You gotta do something about it can't just stay there. He was healed. Now we got to go. So what do you do? I mean, listen, for the person who's just checking out our church, here's what I want you to hear. Maybe you're here and you're just checking out Heights Church and this whole God thing. Maybe you're online somewhere and you're just like, hey, I'm going to check out this online church. Here's my message to you. If you're just seeking, you're just kind of checking this whole thing out. Just this is what you need to know. God loves you. He's got a plan for you and he wants to be in a relationship with you. Just, just, just sit there for a while. Yes, yes, just, just sit there for a minute. You don't need to get into the weeds. You don't have to have all the answers. Just know that God loves you. He's got a plan for you, and he wants to be in a relationship with you. And just start there. That's what you can do. But maybe you've been trying to live God's way, <laughs> and, and you're a follower of Jesus, and you're leaning in, and you're having some success, and you're having some failure. Maybe it's a total disaster. I don't know, but there's reasons for it. Maybe you're doing really well, but there's this idea that you're living in and walking with Jesus, but you know what? You still have that addiction. You still have that hang up. That, that chain is still there. Guess what? That's the gift of the local church so that you could come and we can help you. We can get you into groups to help get, bring freedom from those things that are holding you down, those hurts and hang ups, those traumas, those past abuses. That's why the church is here to be a tool for God to bring healing and restoration to you and to this community. So do something about it. Give us a call. We'll, we'll try to get you plugged in. We are here for you. And then lastly, and it's simply this. This is one of my favorites. Doing this message last night, getting ready. Uh, this was awesome. Listen, once you, once you, you know, realize where you're, you're sick, and where you're hurting, where you're paralyzed, and you get help and you see this growth, it doesn't matter where you are in your faith journey. You don't have to have all your stuff figured out, all your stuff solved, because that'll never happen, by the way. You're, you're, a, you're a work in progress. As Craig says, I love you, we're friends, but you are a work in progress. I am a work in progress. So as God is having victory in our lives, you know what we get to do? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and destroy roofs for others. That's what I want you to do. You know what would probably happen? Here's what I guarantee would happen. Those guys come and they're tearing through the roof. They lower that guy down. He gets healed. He gets up. It says he picks up his mat and he makes his way through the crowd. He's like, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. And people are like, what in the world? I've never seen anything like that, right? Because it's Jesus and this, everything's cool and check this out. And you know what happened? He didn't get outside of that crowd and go, I'm going on vacation. I guarantee it. Now that's not in scripture. This is in my head, but I'm figuring that I guarantee you, if he knew somebody who needed healing and needed Jesus, or he maybe needed, knew another paralyzed guy, I guarantee you, he went to his house and said, I know somebody who can restore you. We need to start busting out roofs so that we can get our friends in front of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Let's do that together. Let's do that together. See, when you've experienced God and God's love has come into your life and, and, and in a very real way, you're gonna to wanna to introduce people to him. And I get it, that can be scary and that's risky. But I know of a place, <laughs> Heights Church, that cares about your friends, cares about your families, and these doors are open to them. Just, you don't even need to bust our roof off. Please don't. <laughs> we'll let you in. We'll find you a good seat. 
and set them down and let us introduce Jesus to them. That's as easy as it gets. We have life groups. We have ministries. Let us help you introduce Jesus to your friends, to your family. May you begin to walk free from what's paralyzing you because nothing can keep you from the truth. So you walk in freedom from those things that have been paralyzing you. May the lies of the enemy that says you can't make a difference, may they be made silent because God says you can, so you will. So now let's go, you and I together, linking arms of the local church and go destroy roofs so people can see Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you, God, that you are a good God who loves us, that, that you don't wanna leave us where we are. You wanna restore us. You wanna bring hope to us. That's what this is about. It's about hope for us and for others. God, but I know that there's somebody out there right now thinking, I, I, I need the hope of Jesus. I, I need that. Before, I, that's where I'm paralyzed. I have sin that's unforgiven because I don't have a relationship with Christ. That's what I need first. I need that first healing he gave that man. Your sins are forgiven. That's what I need. I know there are people online and I know there are people here in our auditorium. And if that's you, you just, I, I need that. I need that miracle first. I need the greatest of miracles. You just simply pray and say, Lord, I, I, I'm asking for that miracle of forgiveness that is made possible through Jesus. God, I, I, I pray that you would forgive me of my sins. I put my faith in the work that you did on the cross. Lord, I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Help me to be the person that you've created me to be so that we can begin to work and move and get rid of all those things that have kept me down. And Lord, I, re I receive the free gift of eternal life through your son, Jesus. Lord, the rest of us, I pray, God, that this week we would go and say, man, where, where are those areas that just, I'm, I'm paralyzed still, I'm still chained to it. I need to do something about it. And I pray, Father, that you would motivate us to, to move forward, to get help, to get clarity, to whatever it, we have to do. We gotta do something. We can't let things hold us down. We gotta do whatever it takes to get to truth. So, Lord, I pray, God, that that's, that's, that's our process this week as we climb up in your lap and sit in your presence, that you'd bring clarity to those areas of our lives. We thank you for those who made decisions online and here in the, home, in the, in the auditorium to follow you. And Lord God, we, we just wanna say thank you. Help us to go rip some roofs off and get people in front of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We pray that in your son's name, amen.